Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Listen, if you're new here, my name is Brandon. I'm a chef here in Silicon Valley. And listen, I bring you content on the daily, especially on Instagram and TikTok. Make sure you follow me over there. The links will be in the description. But here on YouTube, I post every Wednesday and Friday. But listen, I'm in my garage today because I wanted to show you, I get this question a lot, and I'm sorry, I'm still in my chef jackets because I don't have an undershirt. I wanted to film before I go inside because I got my kids and my wife and everything. So I think, so I'm still in my chef whites. This was not on purpose, I promise. But check this out. I get this question a lot. Chef, how do you build a dish? How do you put a dish on a tasting menu? How do you put components together? And I think what's really important is to take in consideration, I was taught this technique and I wanna share it. I think it's really important, especially for an upcoming chef, a, a new culinarian. So I had the luxury of working at Alinea in 2012, 2013, and I learned a ton there, but one of the biggest things that I've learned is something called flavor bouncing. And um, this was not invented by me, but it was invented by Chef Ackett's, or I don't know who it was invented by, but I know I learned it from the team at Alinea. It was not me, so make sure that's very important. Gotta give credit where credit's due. But I took it with me forever, and I built upon it. So, as you can see, there's a couple things on here, and I'll get into that, but I wanted to show you because it's, it's really, it's actually pretty simple if you think about it, but it can be complex. But th I live and die by this. Okay, so I wanna, I wanna um, show you how I do this, and we're gonna go right into it. I'm, this is gonna be more geared towards a tasting menu. I will show you my point of view on a more a la carte dish. But for right now, we're gonna pick, uh, I saw some beautiful strawberries at the farmer's market, so we're gonna say that's the base, that's the base to it. That's the, fo strawberries are the focal. Okay, so then you circle that, right? This is the main focus, strawberries. Next, uh, what goes with strawberries? So I'm gonna say long pepper. Okay, what else goes with strawberries, but then also goes with long pepper? I'm gonna throw this out there. Foie, foie gras. Okay, don't come after me in the comments. This is a chef channel, I love foie gras, but listen, it, it, where I get it from, it's sustainable. Anyway, moving on. Next, we know that foie gras, strawberries, goes very good with cognac, right? And then I'm gonna pick one more ingredient. So I'm gonna say honey. Okay, and then here's the thing. What's really important is, as we build this dish, we have our focal ingredient. And the, pretty much the rule of thumb is, is then you have your supporting ingredients, but all the supporting ingredients have to go with each other. So we know that foie gras goes with cognac, of course. Foie gras also goes with long pepper. Foie gras also goes with honey and strawberries plays with everything. So this would be ideal. Now, I think what's really important, and this is the reason why I have it stated here, before you even create a dish, um, it's always important to remember what season you're in. I'm telling you right now, chefs, it's up to us. The reason why we have things all year long is because of the demand, but it's up to us chefs to use what's in season. It's a much better product, trust me. You don't wanna be using asparagus in the dead of winter. Even though you can get it, it's not as good as it is during asparagus season. So it's just an example. So I always make sure I'm with the season. Right now we are uh, in between, um, actually we're in summer pretty much. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're there, we're like right there. But anyway, so I know that all these are in season. Strawberries for sure, these aren't really seasonal, they're all year round, but I think that's really important, go with that. So the first thing we're gonna hop into is I have these four rules here and they're in this order for a reason. First things first, technique. I can't stress this enough. It has to be cooked and prepared properly, okay? As a professional. But I can't tell you enough where the idea is good enough, but then the execution is just pfft. This means technique, okay? So, what am I talking about? Great. Strawberries, how are we gonna do them, right? And I think what's really important is, it's to highlight this in two or three different ways, right? So an example of that might be, okay, strawberry powder, strawberry shaved thin, strawberry sorbet, strawberry compote. There's, a, I would showcase a couple of different ways of the main focal ingredient. Then with the supporting ingredients, right? What technique are we gonna use for the foie gras? The first thing that comes to my head is shaved torchon, okay? And I think that would just be amazing, right? So once you have a plan, you've gotta make sure that execution is good, right? Foie gras. Torchon. If we say we're gonna make a torchon, let's make a torchon, right? You commit to it. It could also be pan seared or pan roasted or whatever, but just make sure the technique is on point. That is the most important thing. Then, 
So let's then let's let's go into the next one. Flavor. The second one, just as important as technique, but I can't stress enough. Every component has to make sense. I've tasted so many dishes that have like a, just a mis imbalance of flavors, and it boils down to the person that was cooking it or the person that was finishing it. And I think what's really important is taking consideration when we're talking about flavor here. Okay, we don't want raw cognac. We want we want just the slightest hint, right? A teaspoon could completely ruin the dish, right, on one plate. So I think what's really important is make sure the flavor is there, right? You don't want the whole dish tasting like cognac. The torchon, it could definitely be too salty. It could definitely be under seasoned. Um, you know, it's it's very important. Are we using the long pepper to crust the outside or sprinkle the outside? What, how big? Is, how fine? How you know? What's going to be the grind on the long pepper? You know what I'm saying? All these things take a role. You don't want the whole dish tasting like long pepper, right? So flavor is very important. You want all the flavors to go together, but not one that overpowers the main ingredient, okay? So for example, strawberries. The strawberries have to be perfect, okay? Now, also keep in mind that it's important. Next, texture. This is number three. Now, we can't just have cooked strawberries, cooked foie gras, uh, long pepper that's just, you know, whatever, and then honey that's syrupy. Everything's gonna be soft, right? So how are we creating different temp textures with different temperatures? So a good example is the foie gras torchon. Is it gonna be frozen and shaved, right? So you have a, te a temperature of chilled or cold. The cognac, is that gonna get, um, you know, is that a flambe? Is that in the foie gras? Is that, um, you know, is that going with the honey as the drizzle, as a gastrique? You know, are we caramelizing the honey? Are we making the honey uh, honeycomb? Are we, you know, are we using honeycomb or, you know, the baking soda on honeycomb? I think this is really important. So what textures are you gonna have? You always want at least a minimum of two to three textures, right? Crispy, creamy are ideal. So for the strawberries, are we making a strawberry leather? Are we ordering dehydrated strawberry, freeze-dried strawberry? Are we dipping them in, you know, nitrogen? Are we, there's so many things you could do, but I think what's really important is just know that your dish, your dish needs layers of texture, okay? Especially for a tasting menu, it has to be interesting. It has to be, you know, it has to have some oomph. Next. Plate presentation. I always save this one for last, and I think what's really important is um, know, like, have an idea. Focus on the top three first, but then have an idea of how you want to plate it up. Is it is this going to be a dessert? Is it going to be a uh, you know a pre-dessert? Um, you know, is it going to be an appetizer? Right. You can make this an appetizer if you switch these two focal ingredients. Right. So if you switch strawberries with foie gras, you could definitely make it an appetizer. There's so many things you can do, but in all honesty. The flavor balancing is the way of the world, I'm telling you. As a chef, over the years, I've developed and created a plus 100 dishes, right? And i got to be honest, 50% of them I wasn't happy with. But what's really important is when you create a dish, let's say you're a sous chef, you're a chef in the restaurant, what I like to do is I like to spread, I call it spreading the love. So I'm just going to use the kitchen brigade. If you don't understand, I'll explain it to you in another video. But Basically, I would split this up between a sous chef and a couple cooks, right? So I tell the, sh the sous chef or the cooks my vision, hey, this is what we should do. What do you think? How do you think we should do this, right? That way there's some ownership and then everybody comes together and creates the dish and everybody has a little piece of the pie. I think this is ideal and it's the best way to create teamwork. So anyway, that's where we're at, um, you know, for an a la carte dish, not tasting menu. Good example. So let's say, chef, I don't do tasting menu, I do a la carte, easy money. Whenever you think of an a la carte dish, you need to show value. So the immediately thing that I would do, you can't sell strawberries for 20 bucks, but you know what you can sell for $20 is foie gras. So I would switch this, make this the focal, and then with foie gras, you always need, a think of a starch and a vegetable or a fruit, right? You have to do a composed dish. This is what people, I trust me, I tried for years to make dishes without starches, but guess what? perception is reality okay so when it comes to that for this I would definitely add brioche right or you could just put bread right or a crisp right so you could definitely switch this turn it into an appetizer snap of the fingers and it's that easy right so then foie gras then how are we doing this then I would do that you know I would do a piece of foie gras pan seared right show the value a brioche toast point or just a plank whatever the case may be um, you know, then you can also add, uh, you know, some sort of element of, um, you know, sweet, 
to help, you know, like Sauternes instead of Cognac, or, um, you know, just a splash of uh, Armagnac or white wine, whatever the case may be, but that's how you do it. So basically, brioche, then you turn this into an appetizer, that's how you do it for an a la carte dish. All right? But I like the idea of a dessert. So anyway, if this brought you some value, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe, okay? And let me know in the comments, what do you wanna know? From a professional chef with years of experience, I think what's uh, keeping me going and what's driving this, this force of just, you know, in order for me to keep the knowledge that I have, I gotta give it away. And I want to truly help other people coming up in the industry, you know, over this last year, over COVID, you know, we, the restaurant industry took, was, had the legs swiped from under us and it changed the game, but I think it's my due diligence as a chef. Sorry, I am sweating. I would take off my chef coat, but I am uh, literally naked under here. Anyway, I think it's my due diligence as a chef is to help the younger generation. So I'm here to help, I'm here to offer a service. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you wanna make next. And if you're not following me on IG or TikTok, make sure you get over there, okay? Get over there, link's gonna be in the description. Thanks a lot.